Ready? I like I listen to it. Hi, guys. Welcome to part two of the Steve to the Max show. This is going to be a different name. Uh, eventually, it's going to be a small business podcast. But today we have Eric and Josh in the house and they are from Kind Care. So if you guys have any questions or anything, you could put us in the chats or also they're going to explain right now of exactly what they do, where they are and how everything works. So introduce yourself, guys. Hi, my name is Eric Mack. I'm the executive director for Kind Care Assisted Living. And I am uh, Josh Seville. I am the sales and marketing director at Kind Care as well. Oh, nice to meet you guys. Thank you. And I'm Chris Tracy. Thanks yes. for having me. This is Chris Tracy, the marketer over here, and he's a marketer too. I am, I am. So we got two marketers in the house. <laughs> so tell us, you guys, uh, what's going on? Um, where are you guys located, first of all? Want to take it away, Eric? Yeah, so we're going to be right up the street at 483 North Main Street. It's a brand new five-story building for assisted living. That's the that's the new building. If you guys don't know, that's on the corner there. Uh, was it diagonal from CVS? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's like diagonal across from Burger King parking lot. So it's the Polish American. Yeah, the one that's been under construction for a while now, but it's a beautiful building. Yes, yes, and it's going to be for assisted living and memory care for the town of Bristol and the surrounding area. Yeah. Got any questions there? Uh? How'd you get into um, this field, Eric? This is a fascinating. Uh, field it's, yeah. it's 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 a very noble one to say the least but how'd you get into it i think like uh for me it was like the epiphany one thinking about my grandmother thinking about somebody who would want to take care of my grandmother and how she would be treated and i want to kind of take care of that population in the same way um you know really kind of kind of called to me to help that segment which is vulnerable or could be vulnerable and does need support and, right, and we right. should be caring for our elderly. Right, exactly. All right. Sir, how'd you get into this? Oh, so it's a long story, but I'll keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, take it away, man. So right out of college, I had no idea I'd work with seniors. No idea whatsoever. But my mother worked at a different community, and I became her marketing assistant, and I fell in love with the senior population. I was young. I wanted that wisdom. And working with seniors every day gave, gave me that. It gave me a, a feeling of purpose a feeling of self-fulfillment and helping people find care and then and find the needs they they have like really what's, helped it out what's one of the questions you always ask one of the questions i always ask especially couples. there's that many questions oh yeah there's so, so <laughs> no, many. especially couples but a couples i ask i if they're if they're together for a long time i said what's the secret I call myself the single bachelor, so I always try. <laughs> I always try to get, you know, some wisdom from them and understand how they stay together for so long. Because that generation, it's it's built on love and trust. You know, right, 40, you're absolutely 50 right. Years, yeah, sixty years. Yeah, they're, they're coming in if they're both still alive. You know, they've been married sixty plus. That's years. That's crazy. I'm not even sixty. I yet. know, right? <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. They're married for sixty years and my body's falling apart. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm only in my mid fifties. You know what I mean? So exactly. But yeah, it's crazy. I'm glad you started to talk about working with the senior population and, and how it's it's a it's a warm and fuzzy noble crowd to work with. Yeah. Um, however, there is a part of our society I think that doesn't have the perception of it. They they look at things a different way for one reason or another. They're just uneducated. So today yeah. uh, we're going to get some MythBusters. Yes. Uh, I would love for you guys to start to clear the air on any myths, uh, urban legends, or just untruths with respect to putting a friend or a family member into an assisted living facility, such as the ones that Kind Care operates. Could you guys start to uh, right the ship on this and educate people? What are the top 10, if you want to do rapid fire, let's do, for those of us who can remember the David Letterman uh, days, <laughs> some of us don't, but I aged myself, that's okay. Let's go top 10. What what myths would you like to dispel out there about putting a, a loved one into a uh, fac assisted uh, facility such as the ones uh, Kind Care has? Let me start us off, Eric. Yeah. So, like, th there's there's obviously a lot, and there's a lot of education always with, with a business or anything that you're trying to do. And one of them is that um, generally there will be no self-care. There will be no options for you in the building. It's almost like you're dropped in a building – and everyone leaves you alone. And our building, and most buildings, we're gonna have a salon. Sure. We're gonna have a professional salon in there. You can get your hair cut, you can get colored, men can get shaved. Start to finish, a full service salon for people to go and care for, which is important, especially um, 
even not especially but even when you're older you still want to be looking good right exactly yep and you don't have to leave the building you don't have to go down the street i wish i was like that now or i couldn't even <laughs> i don't even like leaving my house right. i mean if i can have all that so explain exactly okay you have the hairdressing thing but you also have you know great food i mean you have so oh, many yeah, different things yeah, there's so many more things and that's part of the other busters that that we'll kind of get to but we'll kind of start with that one first is you know you're, you're able to care for yourself and you don't have to go out and let's face it as you get older our population is in their 80s 90s and hundreds driving becomes a challenge they just walk down to the elevator go down to the second floor and walk in and it's a full service salon it's kind of nice so wow. I, th I think in a nutshell uh just to summarize this i don't know josh if you had anything that you wanted to um piggyback on that with but i, th I think that gets the point across yeah. to summarize it that in, in a nutshell is people think that their loved one will be neglected right and they're going to go into some boring stale smelly stinky facility and that's it their life is over yeah. which there the there is a lot of those but this yeah. is not ex not at yeah. all no. what you were telling is. me outside i'm like wow it's like a nightclub in there it's a, it's a yeah. whole song and dance and plenty of entertainment and the the, the residents yeah. are are uh they get attention and they're cared for which i think is people don't realize i didn't realize what you were telling me outside yeah i was like that's cool so like the next one there's another yeah. one yeah so like eric was saying most people they don't need to leave the community they have everything they need in there it's like living in a resort basically but that leads into another myth that you can't leave or that you're locked in this community <laughs> so Which, everyone, yeah i've heard i i yeah. hear all the horror stories but that's not you guys no 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 and, and they they think we call them adult children so these right. adult children are looking for their parents they think we're going to place them in this community my, my mom or my dad and they're not going to get out whatsoever and that's not the case. Yeah, so basically, it's assisted living. It's not like a convalescent home or where they lock the doors. This yeah. is just assisted living. It, if you need help, you get the help. Yeah. And it's right there. You it's know what I mean? It's a social right community. Yeah, exa exactly. It's a social community. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, what we, what we do is we do bus trips. We have scheduled outings. At that age, even going to the grocery store is a social outing. It's getting out in the community, being able to just have that sense of you know, being, being in the outdoors, so to say, um, you know, we do, we're going to go to the casino, we're going to go to the mall. There's a lot of different shopping things that we do as well. And then go into playhouses and movie theaters. So it's getting people outside of the community, even though we have most of those things that we can provide for them in the community, mm -hmm. it's getting them out as well. That, um, really stimulates them both socially and mentally too. Wow. That's, that's fabulous. So there's actually staff that will engage with them and participate and bring them out in the community and do stuff. Yeah. So it's not like they're just stuck in their room all by themselves with a TV. And they got to wait Okay, for we'll the... let you know when it's dinner time. Time no. for your meds. Yeah. Have you guys heard about the Barn Center here in Bristol? That they're working on a 1.5 mile trail. Oh, that they are? That's going to be ADA accessible also. That's going to open, I think, next year. Yes. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, right here in Bristol. So, you know, when you start talking about, like, entertainment... We're gonna have a movie theater on the property. That's that's crazy. I never yeah. I never in a million years imagined. <laughs> Me neither. And the movie theater is right next to the bistro, which is right next to the bar. This could be a hangout. Yeah, especially oh, if, right? you're like, if you're like cougars. I was like, <laughs> just wait till you hear about going happy there Friday hour. night. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, and that wall goes up or down. So when the movie theater is going up, the wall's up. If we want to take it down and have one big room, and so I'll, we will have an actual. We would call it life engagement director. Yep. Their job is activities, the movies, the trips, right? The bingo, the cards. Um, I want to live there. You, you, you Seriously, know, and, and man. I'm, I'm going to do a little something different here with our activities department. We're kind care. Right. Yeah. By the way, you guys, I put kinder care. It's <laughs> not that. It's yeah, kind, kind care. care. So well, I, I apologize. Right. I will relabel that. Yeah. But we are kind care, kindness and care. And one of the things we're going to do with our activities department, we're going to get people together to knit hats for the cancer patients. Oh, that's a great idea. We're going to get them knitting dog vests for the shelter, socks for the homeless people. Yep. That's Eric, a great idea. It gives yeah. them something to do and they're giving back. Yeah, pair them up with the Girl Scouts, create cards for people in the hospitals, in the yeah. nursing homes. I, I love how Kind Care walks to walk and they talk to talk. Yeah. It's not just, hey, we'll just label our company some cool thing no. just to attract people, but you actually... It is and, kind. Of, yeah. And you guys already have people ready to come in there. That's what you're telling me outside, right? We do. We made a lot of a lot of different connections, and we want to engage people in the community, but also bring the whole Bristol community together. Right. That's the whole. Now, point. how uh, how many uh, openings do you have there? Like, I mean, how many are you to 
Um, so we have 117 beds. Units, I mean, basically. Yep, 117 beds. 28 of them will be designated towards memory care. Okay. And right now we're at 18 deposits? 18, yes. Already. 18 deposits, yep. That's pretty damn good. Yeah. That's Creating really some jobs for the people of Bristol. Yeah, yeah we let's are. go. Yeah, how long, how long were you guys on the construction part? A year uh, or no, more? It's probably closer to two because it's, really, it's been that long. This kind of started right around, co- you know. Oh yeah. With, with COVID going on, so there were still some. some then all the permits and everything yeah. else. You and guys they had the blast do. down into the bedrock there. Oh, what happened with that? Why was it on fire? <laughs> what was that all about? <laughs> the fire. I, the infamous fire. No, I, I was in Burger <laughs> yeah. King. I'm like. Is oh, that yeah. supposed to be like that? <laughs> it, it was Fire? Like, okay, moving but on. I know, number I know, number seven? No, I, know, I know it wasn't you guys. No, it was minor. I, well, it, it was a very minor That's fire. what I heard. It was very yeah. minor. But what was it exactly? They, they were just heating up the glue. It was a very cool Is that day. what it was? They had a blowtorch. Yeah. They were heating up the glue to make it malleable. Yeah. They left the blowtorch down, one of the construction workers, and it lit some of the Ah, uh, that's fire. what happened. And that's all it was. Yeah. It seemed, it looked a lot bigger than it oh, was. Oh, it definitely <laughs> looked a lot. Yeah, but then I saw in comments on Bristol Talks, and there was like, oh, it was really nothing. It was just mostly smoke. You so, know what I mean? So, exactly. so tomorrow we're actually feeding the uh, fire department. Oh, you are? <laughs> yeah, we're giving them lunch. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's awesome. And we've Love done it. the police, and we've done EMS already. Oh, that's so, awesome. You know, that's really cool. Being, communi- to your point, community-based. And kind. Yeah, and kind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when do you guys officially open? Like, I know you have deposits yes. down already. Do you have an official date yet? Or Our, our goal is August 1st. Okay. Yep. That's August our goal 1st. right now. To start moving residents in. Oh, okay. That's... Construction should be done end of June, beginning of July. Now, what kind of construction do you have left to do? Um... Elevators? Because people are going to be yeah. asking questions like, oh, what's going on? How far along yeah. you guys? And stuff like that. So they're putting in the two elevators. Okay. Um, they're probably now on the third, fourth, and fifth floor, finishing painting, cabinets, showers. And then on the first floor, basically the kitchen. That's going to be the biggest thing. And okay. the dining room, I kind see. of squaring it off. I see. But the boilers are in there already. The hard um, stuff. So yeah, all, all the hard stuff is in there. So you guys are just doing the touch-ups. And yeah, and then once construction's done, uh, all the furniture for the common spaces okay. will come in. IT, wire, finish like off that. wiring, stuff like oh, that. That's yeah. Cool. Now, I heard it's on Bristol Talks. People are always yelling. Bristol that, uh, Talks. Yeah. I, <laughs> where's the parking and all that? There's no parking. Yeah. Explain to these people that these people are living there. They don't really need cars. <laughs> you know, th- that parking... What'd you say? It was like fifty something spots. Fifty one spots there. on it the It doesn't look like it, but there is parking out there, guys. You know, yeah. there is parking out there. So and it's and there's gonna be a lot of employees, but those people that live there, they they live there and they ha- most of them probably don't even drive, right? Or they they don't even need to drive, actually, you know? Yeah, a lot of them don't. I yeah. mean, if they want, they can keep a car there so they can a lo- for seniors losing their car is feeling they feel like they're losing their independence exactly but you guys have everything in there so. exactly yeah. but you know if they can drive they can keep their car we have we're going to have reserve spots for the seniors and for visitors oh so you have you know, reserve another, spots yeah. for that oh that's, and that's another myth right yeah you can't that take was. your car you're going to oh, lose yeah. it and we'll actually give you we'll actually give you to his point a reserve spot close to the door mm-hmm. but we're also on a bus line right so a lot of employees won't will even be bringing their right buses. and on top yeah. of that you said you have drop-offs or whatever bus trips and stuff like yeah. that so you guys have your own vehicles for that so but like also the bus will take them to doctor's appointments oh like that's like we awesome will, we will help schedule that that's too. a that's a big thing that's especially a big thing. Yeah, yeah it's a huge thing actually yeah i mean most of the cnas that have you know they're, they're going to be the the biggest amount of people employed in our building most of them are from around the area they're the neighborhoods surrounding our building so some people will bike, some people will walk, some people right. take the bus. And this is a good place too, because like you know, you have CVS, Cross Street, you, you know, you have all, you know, restaurants. Everything's right Route here. Six. Yeah, and it's good exercise on top yeah. of that. You know what I mean? So. And I think as we continue to build downtown here, right? You guys going to take up more Bristol? No, but you've got. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, we're going into Naugatuck, Berlin, really? probably Simsbury. Really? Wow, yeah. you guys got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. yeah. But you've got the apartments going with the retail space right. starting soon. Right over there, yeah. yeah. Right, right across right. the street. They're trying China. to bring this community to people that need it. So traditionally, assisted living is for white-collar folks. Right, exactly. They can afford it. It's all private pay. Now, we are private pay, but we're the most affordable in the area. Yes. Now, explain to them. You were telling me outside what the average is, and what do you guys? what's the average for you guys? So average-wise costs... For assisted living with and care. Then, now, do you guys have, have like are all the rooms like uniform, or do you have like 
luxury rooms versus no all uniform okay. so they're all uniform 57 okay. of our 60 apartments are companion suites okay meaning they're two bedroom apartments okay each person has their own private bedroom wow. but they do share a living room a bathroom and a kitchenette wow that's and pretty what cool yeah and what we're trying to do is is build on that companionship a lot of seniors are in their house or in a different community all on their own they're all lonely. alone yeah you know, we alone. saw through covid you know the rise in depression the rise in anxiety especially in the senior population because oh, they couldn't absolutely. get out. Right. Absolutely. The rise in suicide in men. Yeah. It's seniors it's the highest, was really. the highest in the country during COVID. I love how there's the support staff. You know, yeah. it's kind of, you meet friends there and they bring it to the doctors or what have you. It's kind of like... Well, that's what our yeah. companion model is all about. If I move a single person who's home alone into a one bedroom, they're still going to be alone. We move them into our place, you instantly make a friend. Yeah. Now, not only that, the family comes to visit you, they grab the roommate and vice versa. So you extend the family touch for people. Hmm. You know. That's good. Anything else you guys want to discuss? If there's any other, was there any other uh, rumor, or not rumors, but you know, misconceptions about that that you guys uh, I'm just either anxious, heard or? I'm anxiously awaiting the, the number one. <laughs> yeah. The number what's, one what's myth. The, what's the big myth that we can dispel yeah yeah we'll we'll get to it we'll, we'll get to it <laughs> <laughs> i'm so, just trying to keep my eye on the shot clock <laughs> yeah right um yeah that 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 we will definitely keep an eye on um so you, you know we, we've got we've already talked about you know self-care right we, we, we've got the aids in there we've got the support in there we've got the activities going on in there you can keep your car um uh let me see a lot of times people say, you can't have any fun, right? The fun is gone. Yeah. From what you guys just told me, I want to move there. <laughs> exactly. But we're going to have a bar serving alcohol to those that can have it or not, but we're going to be doing the activities. We're going to be doing the 4th of July barbecue. So this is how I, probably not this year, but next year. So let's go to Labor Day if we're open. Labor Day, we have a barbecue because we're going to have an outdoor area with a grill. Culinary is going to be outside grilling. I'm going to invite all the residents now. Yep. I'm going to invite their families. When is the ribbon cutting? Is is any is this a private Sometime ribbon enough. cutting or is no 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 any, it'll be no public. It, it'll okay be public. it'll be public. Okay. We don't have a date just you don't yet. have a date yet, no. but it is coming obviously soon. But this is just like an activity we'll be doing Labor Day barbecue. The residents, their families are invited. The workers and their families are invited. So why shouldn't the workers and their families be invited too? If I'm caring for you and I see you forty hours a day. Yeah. Or a week. Right. It'd be nice to and seniors love they yeah, they love they love children. Companion, yeah. yeah. And they love seeing all the children running around. So I want you know, that's the kind of thing like, no, you can't have any fun. We absolutely will. We'll be having parties. How could you not? With and, that's that many things going on. <clears throat> right. So you have hundred and seventeen people, you get a building filled, you got a lot of activity going on, energy, positive energy getting You're out. Creating there. one large family. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's you a great each idea. Other all the time. You have that that outlet to go to if you ever needed anybody and they're there they're always there you know it's they're there for you it shouldn't be that dark gloomy perception right like yeah. the, the the flickering light in the hallway you know everyone's oh, just yeah. sitting in their room watching tv <laughs> yeah. you know like just waiting to die waiting to die <laughs> yeah, exactly did you give us any numbers yet i wasn't no or, uh, so not uh, give us the average of what uh, oh, everyone right. else charges compared to what you guys charge because you guys are on the lower end financially but you're on a higher end on what you provide correct correct so on average a senior living community you're paying around six to eight thousand dollars a month and that's usually with care now most communities are all a car now this is with you guys no that's with other that's, other communities okay so with us we're 4850 oh but we're all inclusive oh with all the care any medication management incontinence care I Everything want to live there now. <laughs> what, what's Housekeeping. The, what's, the min- what's the minimum age over there? <laughs> hey, 55. Really? Yeah. yeah Two 55. years, I'll be there. Man. Yeah. Jesus. I got, I'll save your spot. That's a great idea. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not joking. <laughs> yeah. We should move in just because it would be, be fun TikTok videos, like yeah. me and him living in there. Yeah, you know, that'd be great. <laughs> there's it's a, like uh, a skit. That, but there, yeah, go there's, ahead. There's a guy on LinkedIn, uh, Steve Gurney. He actually lived in several communities for a year to kind of become a expert yep um in, in, in the field and he does a lot of talk about that about how living in there it really changed his perception wow that's like a whole new level of caring for the population <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> 
I but did. you know, think about it. It's housekeeping and laundry too. Your meals, Man, the activities. I want to go in. Where can I go in there just to yeah. check it out? As and soon as we're open. Oh, I gotta wait. Uh, I still gotta wait. <laughs> it's still hard hats <laughs> and safe. August first. You can go August first. I was gonna try yeah. to put you on the spot, but yeah, yeah, I try. Well, I'll tell you what. When construction's done, you can come over. Okay. Right now, it's still hard hats and uh, boots oh, and safety and all that. <laughs> okay. This is great, Eric, because fun doesn't exactly come to people's minds when you say assisted living. They just don't think fun. They're like, ooh, but this right, right. puts a whole new paint job on things. I think. Let me tell you, go to a go to a happy hour in any community. It's the most <laughs> wild time. Yeah. No, he's right. Yeah, he's right because I've witnessed it for myself. Yeah, yeah. Right. me and you were there August first. I'll be there. And then here's the thing with that companion care. Let's say you're brand new in the community and you're like, I don't want to go out that door. I don't know anybody. First thing you do is you meet your roommate, and we're you know I like to call it the dating profile you're going to fill out because we want to match you appropriately with somebody idea. else. Whose idea yeah. was that? Um, well, that was just that's just oh. what we do. Oh, okay. yeah. Wow. I, I call it the dating profile. No, that's yeah. a great idea. <laughs> yeah, that was my my spin on it. But because we want to match you up, and then you've got somebody to walk out, go to happy hour, go to the events, mm-hmm. go to dinner, and then let's say one time your roommate's like, "Oh, I don't want to go." Right. Well, I've made other friends. The two generally becomes the foursome, right? In the community, which is great. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Because, yeah, they, that's exactly what they need is uh, the community aspect of it. But that, yeah. Because, like you, you know, like you said, people are just sitting watching TV or whatever and just waiting to die. And it, this is totally and the that, opposite. That's the opposite this is, of what we're doing. This is, yeah, the absolute opposite. It's, it's uh, basically letting you live to your fullest. Yeah. And so to, to that point, 24-hour access. 24 hour access to family can come in at two in the morning really now that's the you, doors right the doors are locked but they still can they can ring the doorbell staff will come down and let them in god that's awesome that's a huge wow. myth because you people right. think they're gonna their parents are locked away and they a lot of people do them. think even i thought that i didn't yeah. know that you can do that so because like hospitals it's visiting hours right Sorry, it's that's what o'clock. i thought that's yeah. what i thought yeah. too it's so it's not like that at all not like that at all because it's their home even our assisted living residents can come and go as they please. Yep. Really, whenever they want. Yep. Wow, it's it's their home. You now, know, when you when home. you admit someone, you uh, obviously you have to find out their ailments and stuff like that. Let's say you do have someone with Alzheimer's or something like that come there. What do you do then? So we would do an assessment. Okay. You know, we we first do discovery with the family, get to know what they need, the care needs, um, what's been going on. A lot of people with Alzheimer's uh, do wander. That's so what that's, that's what the, I was wondering. How does that? How do you wandering stop? elopement? How do you stop something like that? Well, that's what our memory cares for. Okay. That's our secure neighborhood. It is locked. Oh, okay. At all, times. all right. So there's a keypad totally on. separate area yeah. for yeah. that. Oh, that's no. our third floor. Third oh, floor. Okay. So we're going to have extra staffing so in So you there. make it there's... a pain in the ass to get out of there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, pretty yeah. much. For certain people that, yes. that need to be. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, unless you know the code. <laughs> yeah, exactly the right. Yeah. But those yeah. residents can go go throughout the rest of our community. They just have a CNA guiding them oh, or okay. a family member. Okay. Yeah. So that makes yeah that makes everybody feel better. So we'll bring them down to happy hour. We yep. just got to make sure it's a one to one, right? Right. You know, right, right for right, the yeah. elopement. Exactly, and they, they and do have their own uh, their own activity room in there. They have their own dining room. They have a balcony. They have quite a bit balcony on that floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the heck, man? So if they want to go outside and kind of like people watch, yeah, get some fresh you know, air. especially it's going to be on the north uh, main street side, yep. looking right at the Santander Bank. Yep. The balcony is going to be right there, and they'll be able to. I go didn't out even and, notice that. Yeah. The, the balcony is already up. Yeah. I must be blind. I just the second drive. floor is going to have one, but that's going to be overlooking the parking lot, the church back there, and the first floor outdoor area. Oh yeah, well, yeah. looking at the church is nice too. Yeah, it's pr- more private actually. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Well, all right, well guys, that's a, that does it for our time. Unless you got any more questions for these guys. All right. Um, so where can people go to learn more yeah. about Kind Care? They can go right to our website, kindcarebristol.com. Uh, they can also go on our Facebook. Um, those are the Facebook is where we post most of our upcoming events, our lunch and learns, our fun ones. We're doing a, a little drive by. What date is that? Which one? The drive by. Mm, I want to say it's Monday the fourteenth. Well, you'll find out about it on our Facebook. Yeah, it's on the. It's on the. <laughs> yeah, all of our events. All of our events are online right now. So you know, you're, you're, people are welcome to stop by our sales office right across the street. Uh, we do have a built to scale model apartment there too that we can walk people through, and so they can get an idea of what this place is going to look like. Right, and dispel the rumors and all the other. I don't listen to any of that stuff, you know what I mean, until 
I find out exactly what's going on because yeah. you got people out there just like, oh, here's this. They're going to be this and that. Yeah. And like you said, it's going to be like a prison. It's totally not like that at all. They think know? it's like a nursing home right. and it's really a community. It's so like is that. that the number one myth? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're people a social think it's, model. It's not fun. They it's think it's, yeah. assisted living, not convalescent home. Right. Yep. So there's a, there's a huge difference in that. I'd like to say we're a social model with a minor in medical. You know, there you go. We're there to help you that out, but it's a so, yep. social model. Yep, that's it. Yep, that's good to hear. All right, guys. Well, it was nice talking to you. Yes, thank and you. And we got to have you back on again when yeah. we do the other podcast. And uh, in the meanwhile, stay tuned for uh, these guys. Uh, look at them. What would you say on Facebook? Facebook kind and our care. website. Yes. And your website is kindcare.com. Kindcarebristol.com. Kind, uh, kindcarebristol.com. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's All it right. for today's show. And you guys have a good rest of your weekend.